guys, we are going to be starting episode uh, six, I believe. We're getting pretty close to the end of our first season. Um, if you guys are seeing this episode for the first time, make sure you guys watch the old episodes on the YouTube channel, catch up on the story. It's a good time. But if you guys don't know, we've got Covert Go Blue, Covert Go Gina, and Airball as our players. And we have a wonderful DM in Mox Ruby or Ruben Bresler. Uh, in the info description below, those names will be there. If you guys gotta, want to check out any of our other content creators, please do so. And also real quick, shout out to Cool Stuff for sponsoring uh, these eight episodes and for helping us create some awesome content. Make sure you guys check out Cool Stuff for all your D&D and magic needs. We have a DGen code for 5% off. It tells them that we sent you and helps us run more events. So I'm going to go ahead and let Mox uh, Ruby kick it off. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm the Internet's Ruben Bressler, and this is, uh, D-Gens and Dragons. Um, playing with me are the three people that, uh, were introduced by Nerd Girl, as well as Nerd Girl. Um, they are playing <clears throat> some characters, and their characters are named Bianca. Bianca is a Leonin cat girl druid. Um, there is... Airball playing Airball, the uh, warforged artificer of interesting other planar origin, um, which we got into a little bit at one point. We've got Jen, who is a Kapenin, uh paladin, um, sort of sort of a shakedown heavy kind of situation there. Oh, I forgot to mention Bianca. Uh, you are from Alara originally. Um, mm -hmm. and did a little bit of traveling around before joining the plane jumpers as well. And then of course, Varian, uh, the rogue, uh, brooding over there in the corner played by CGB. Um, and he's from Dominaria. So these four people were sort of handpicked to join the plane jumpers and sort of do jobs that the plane planes walkers don't really necessarily have the time or the capacity to do. And currently they are on the plane of Kamigawa. The job that they were tasked with doing by the Wandering Emperor was to locate an escaped convict, a gang leader named Grease Fang, who runs the Okiba gang and is himself a Nezumi motorcycle rider. Um, they, ex they went from Eiganjo, the seat of the empire, into the city of Tawashi, the city's center in Kamigawa, and decided to collect some rumors, got some rumors, and found that perhaps their best course of action was to follow the trail, which was inside of a sewer system, to Sokenzan, which is a um, mountainous, snowy um, uh, machining district. Um, lots of uh, blue-collar workers there, and they followed the trail to a warehouse, wherein Grease Fang was getting ready to get back onto the, onto the horse, as it were. Along the way, they made some interesting friends. They met Falish, who is an arms dealer, uh, who apparently accepted some uh, nefarious and dangerous material in exchange for some weaponry, uh, that being some Phyrexian oil which uh, our audience voted on and decided that that was going to be their payment. So that's fun. Um, and last we talked, there was a bit of a fracas in the warehouse to try to get uh, Grease Fang. While most of the party was fighting and having a barroom brawl with uh, a, a dozen Nizumi, all the while uh, opposing gangs were... Uh, an opposing gang coming to also take on Grease Fang, that being the Mutokai gang, uh, led by the um, the, to the the this is the Toad Rider gang, um, and they were sort of beating down the door. But inside of a very nice room, Bianca was doing some karaoke performance and distracting Grease Fang so that the rest of her compatriots could sort of quell the uprising. They ultimately did defeat those gang members and shot out the back, thanks to an overpowered conveyor belt, into the Sokenzan Slag River, where they floated down and uh, made their way back to... Um, 
the, the sort of into town, uh, into Tawashi, where they are now at Hank Yoshido's tech shop, um, where they are going to perhaps lay low for a moment and ask some questions. But because they've been successful in their main mission, our characters did indeed level up. So, yay, we're level two now, everybody. Um, before we go any further, does anyone have any questions as it pertains to leveling up? I've never How used this How do website. we do it? Yeah. Great. <laughs> I don't know. So, everyone open up your D&D Beyonds to... I, I have all open. my tabs open. I'm so ready. Great. <laughs> Please turn in your hymnals. No, turn your... Uh, so go to your character sheet. And then mm -hmm. let me let me also go to one of your character sheets so that I can direct you more ably. All right. So as you have your character app open and you click the manage button directly next to your name, you're going to get a pop up on the right side of your screen. There's going to be a, a, an option that says Manage Character and Levels. Okay. Does everybody see that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Great. Got it. It'll take you to your Character Builder page, where you are going to see a level and then a drop-down menu of numbers 1 to 20. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assume none of you are multi-classing right now. Um, if you want to multi-class, let me know. But this will take you up to your second level of whatever uh, your class is. So if you change the 1 to a 2, you are going to unlock some options. Hmm. I have some interesting I don't know what ones. These are. <laughs> some of you are going to have the option to pick a subclass at this point. Uh, how would we know? Um, so when you change it from one to two and you scroll down to your character level section, there will uh, be a blue outlined drop down menu for some of you. Um, I don't believe the rogue or the paladin gets their subclass until three. Um, I don't know what the Artificer gets at two. I get a bunch. You get a bunch of stuff, huh? I have to read, like, an encyclopedia entry. Give me a second. Yes, of course. Uh, and then the Druid is going to get to pick their circle. There are a lot of circles. How do there I know are. which one I want? <laughs> there are a lot of circles. Well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you pick a circle. Let me click over to Bianca's page. Fortunately, for the Rogue and the Paladin... You two are going to get some bonuses. I believe that the Paladin now has Divine Smite. Is that accurate? Uh, the Paladin? Yes. I do have Divine Smite, yes. Nice. Paladin, Divine Smite, deals a lot of damage. So that's always fun. Um, and what do you get at Rogue level two? The only thing I see that says second level is Cunning Action. Ah, yes. So you're going so you get the ability with your cunning action to be more nimble effectively. Um and then at rank th or at level 3, you'll choose your subclass um which will sort of change how not necessarily change how um but enhance how you want to play. Mm. Seems unnecessary with how perfectly nimble I've been. <laughs> I mean, in in terms of mechanics, it is helpful. Um, but yes, based on your, your past history, I don't, of course you've been perfect every single time as far as anyone's concerned. Yes. Yeah. So your druid circle, man, there's a bunch of options here. Um, they druid, sound lovely circle druid, of druid. dreams, circle of stars. Yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of these are super fun and you can change your mind if you decide that you want something different. But it, this is effectively how you like play your character. And so uh, the Circle of the Land Druid is the most basic type, which is sort of you are a druid of your land. And because you are of that land, you are more in tune with different types of spells and environments of that land. 
so that's the basic druid. Um, then there is also Circle of the Moon, which is uh, much more of a combat druid that uh, enhances your wild shape. Um, Circle of the Moon druids gain access to higher level um, wild shapes earlier than regular druids. Okay. Well, I, I'm pretty much digging that. That sounds great. Excellent. Um, just to give you a quick uh, breakdown of some of the other options, uh, the Circle of Dreams druid is a is sort of a uh, fey inspired druid. You have a lot of trickery with mind magic. Um, the Circle of Stars druid, uh, I actually played one on a on a uh, streamed game. It allows you to use your wild shapes instead of turning into a bestial form. You turn into a constellation form the circle of stars is actually from the theros book and so it allows you to sort of become a chalice or become a bow and arrow or become a i believe a dragon and those different forms do different things you don't become a full dragon but uh when you are in that form you can scare people and some other stuff happens um then there's the Circle of the Wildfire Druid, which effectively gives you a little spirit animal that is a wildfire spirit, kind of like a familiar, and allows you to do different types of attacks and uh, mechanics with that. Circle of the Shepherd is, a, is summoning a bunch of animals, right? Disney Princess Druid. Um, <gasps> And uh, that allows you to, yes, exactly, and allows you to bring out uh, a lot of bugs and a lot of squirrels and a lot of other animals to be able to do your bidding for you. Uh, and then Circle of Spores um, is from Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. That is a classic Golgari-style druid that uses spores and fungus and mushrooms to uh, enhance its abilities. So those are all excellent options. And then, of course, the Circle of Land Druid, which is like, if you're from the Tundra, you're going to be better with ice damage, right? If you're from the Underdark, you're going to be better with dark stuff. If you're from the Meadows, right, like you are, then you'd be, you, you would have access to different spells that are uh, better in plain env plains environments. Hmm. Um. For now, though, I'm happy to suggest be the Circle of the Moon Druid, um, which is going to enhance your, your combat acumen uh, by giving you combat wild shape, um, which allows you to go into your wild shape as a bonus action rather than as an action. Nice. And also allows you to choose, I believe, up to level one, like CR1 beasts, as opposed to CR one fourth beasts, so instead of having to be a pony, you mm -hmm. could be a war horse, mm. right? So there you go. Um, okay, seems like a good option. That sounds good. Great. All right. Uh, Airball, you had some infusions, I believe, that you had to choose. Yeah, I am making my way through them. I have Great. almost made up my mind. No worries. I was just just trying to help. Um, for those of you that don't know how artificers work, infusions are things that allow the artificer to kind of plan ahead and put effects into things before combat arises. Um, you can m create magic items. You can enhance weapons. You can... Uh, improve some of your own statistics, and you can get little different options uh, of various different types uh, all over the map. When I played an artificer, I believed that I had... I, I ended up being a artillerist, and so I wanted to have a repeating shot um, was one of my choices, but if you're not a ranged fighter, that might not necessarily be what you want to do. Lots of options. Artificers are, as we've mentioned, very complicated, um, but they are Super fun once you know what you're doing. Yeah, so I don't know what I'm doing, but I know what I'm going to do. If Great. That makes sense. <laughs> Excellent. Right. So the first choice is I get a homunculus servant. Ooh, excellent. Uh, so I get to summon a special homunculus that serves me. Excellent. <laughs> I get to determine its appearance. It's friendly to me and my companions, and it obeys me. 
So it's basically like my own rabbit battery, I think, more or yes. less. Yes. Um, you do get a homunculus servant that you get to order around, and it can carry things, I think, and does lots of other cool stuff. Okay. Number two. I'm going to replicate magic item. I'm going to get a wand, the ability to create wands of secrets. Ooh, okay. Wand of secrets. What does that even do? I'll have to read up on that. Tell the audience uh, what else you got. So the wand of secrets, I already looked it up, is um, I can use an action, and if a secret door or trap is within 30 feet, it pulses and points at the one nearest to me, and it gains 1d3 of charges every day. Amazing. That's... That's a great one for the kind of story that we are telling. Yes, I love it. Uh, the repeating shot, because my oh, okay. guy is a ranged weapon person. And uh, enhanced weapon. So I get a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls. Excellent. And you when I reach level 10, it gives me plus two. Yeah, you have that. a little fibble thip? I think so. It's, it's got to be, right? You've got a little fibble thip. Do you have a name for your uh, homunculus yet, or do you want to decide that along the way? Let's let's see what inspiration strikes me when the time comes. Perfect. How is it not fibble thip? <laughs> it could be fibble thip. It could just be fibble thip. But that's up to that's up to Airball. It's true. Oh, I, I'm I'm also open to just making a poll of it. We'll see. Oh, also good. Um. So the other thing that same things ever gone wrong. Nice. So the other thing that the repeating shot does, in addition to adding uh, bonus to your attack and damage rolls if you make ranged attacks, um, is that you ignore the loading property of anything that has to be reloaded, like a bow and arrow. Basically, you reload as a free action. Um, so it takes away a lot of that um, problem. And also, your weapon now produces its own uh ammunition keeping track of arrows i hate it i hate keeping track of arrows i hate i played a gunslinger one time and i was counting bullets and i hated it for you you now just make whatever it is that you shoot um what weapon do you shoot at range a crossbow crossbow and a boomerang so, and a boomerang okay so now if you point a crossbow it just loads from your arm nice very cool. Um, and those are the subclasses. Um, I do want to add something before we move on. Um, uh, Bianca, mm -hmm. Covert Gogina, you did something during our last game that was spectacular in terms of performance. And so I'm giving you a free feat. <gasps> Um, usually you only get to have feats at level four or, or starting at starting at zero, uh, fighters get them at four, six, eight, and everyone else gets them at like four, eight, 12 at their ability score increases. But because you, you literally performed for us and sang on stream in front of a live studio audience, um, I'm giving you the performer feat. Um, this is going to add a plus one to your charisma perform uh, to your charisma score up to a maximum of 20 um, okay you are going to uh, gain um, uh, proficiency with performance um, if you don't if you don't have proficiency with performance you now have proficiency with it and if you already are proficient with it you double your proficiency bonus with it so we, because I'm doing this live on stream, I'll fix it later, but I'm just letting you know now that when you make performance checks, they will be even more bolstered. Yay! Additionally, when you're performing and you try to distract a humanoid that you can see and who can hear you, like you did last game, you can make a performance check against the uh, humanoid's insight, and if your check succeeds, then you just grab their attention. Um, and that means that their perception checks, their investigation checks, they all do them at disadvantage while you're performing because they're just wrapped in their attention of you. <laughs> so that's kind of how feats work. Feats give you a little tiny bonus here, a little tiny bonus there, a little tiny bonus here. 
on a very specific set of circumstances. And because you sang for us, I wanted to give that to you and to Bianca. <laughs> That's Yay, awesome. Thank so, you. Of course. Um, is um, this the point where I also change spells while I'm on this screen? Sure. So if you go to your spells list, you should have access to, uh, because you're a moon druid, you aren't gaining access to any more spells. Mm -hmm. But the number of spells that you can cast, I believe, goes up. So the number of spells you can cast per day, I should say. Okay. Um, and so if you have uh, more spells that you can prepare, you can also prepare additional spells. Um, as a divine caster, things like paladins, clerics, and druids, every morning they wake up and they pray to their god and they get access to all of the spells on the menu. And so it's very, uh, it's a analysis paralysis oftentimes to pick spells, but you're going to have access to some more spells. No level two spells just yet. Okay. Um, Nerd Girl and CGB, uh, anything needed to update? I think our characters are boring. Well, at level Apparently. two. At level two, your characters are boring. At level three, see, they picked at level two. Their level three is going to be a little bit less interesting. Yeah. So I, I just they're... picked, uh, like, uh, two-hand fighting, so I, like, get a bonus to damage if I, like, clobber someone with a giant thing, and that's it. I was kind of, yes. I also have uh, that one new ability, the Divine Smite. Yes, Divine Smite deals a lot of damage. It lets you turn your spell slots into damage on hits. Um, my main character in my other campaign is a, is a paladin, and all I want to do is smite all day. That's all I want to do. The only thing I don't see is how many times I can use it per day, but... You can use Divine Smite as many spell slots as you have. If you spend a spell slot, then you smite. So... How many spell slots do you have? Uh, it says first level two, but then I don't yep. see a second level. So you've got two first level spell slots, which means that you can smite twice a day. Okay. Um, and smite is just something that you say, like, oh, I hit you, I'm also going to smite. Uh, and then you just add those extra dice damage to there. Uh, cunning action for CGB. Um, you get to, you have a bonus action that you get to do a bunch of stuff. Um, makes you a lot more nimble, not qu a lot quicker, uh, and a lot more difficult to hit. Um, you know, being able to use a bonus action to do all that stuff. I don't know. He was pretty hard to hit when he was, like, swinging by his foot. It's true. Also very difficult to hit when, uh, when swinging by your foot. I'm here, ain't I? <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of being here, we ready to play? We're ready to play. Great. You are in Hank, to, uh, Hank Yoshito's tech shop um, in downtown uh, Towashi. Not necessarily on the main drag. Um, you're, well, I mean, you're on the main drag, but you're not in the middle of town. You are on Main Street, if I recall. Uh, and Hank's is a, uh, a very well-regarded uh, mech shop, mech hanger. And um, you've rolled in with um, Grease Fang, who is still attached to this chair uh, that he was shot out of the warehouse on. And Hank says, oh, uh, new friends? Yeah, uh, can we hang out here for a bit? Get, su get situated? I mean, I'm not trying to... Again, this is supposed to be, you know not uh, i'm not trying to take sides in anything uh and he's like looking behind you to see if anybody's following you uh, uh this is like a dangerous kind of situation for my house um <laughs> go ahead and make a persuasion check for me sure see if hank lets you stay i have plus four do a 16 okay all right, all right. I'll let you stay for a little bit, but I, I ain't trying to have. I'm not. I ain't, I ain't a prison cell. You know what I mean? Fair enough. We're just gonna we're just gonna get our bearings, get situated, and we'll get out of your hair. All right. I'll give you about. I'll give you about sixteen minutes. How's that sound? Uh, we'll make it an hour. <laughs> I 
and I like kind okay, of just push that's past fine. Him Make and- it an hour. <laughs> get get out of the sunlight though. You got to get in the back. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Right. Just push push past him. Let's go, guys. The roller chair rolls past him. <laughs> uh, you have grease fang. Um, nerd girl, go ahead and put up the um the uh what does grease fang do when captured poll if possible ah uh, okay um if that's if that's possible otherwise i'll just wing it um what, have, what does emperor do with grease fang start explaining i'll find it Oh, uh, what does Grease Fang do when captured? So Grease Fang could react in a number of different ways to being captured here. Does he, A, um, try to bribe the party in some way, try to convince the party to let him go, um, you know, try to make an, make an allegiance with the party? Does he instead tell the party that the emperor is corrupt and that, in fact, he is the good guy and tell him – and tell the – the party, whether factual or not, his version of events, or doesn't talk. Fight to the death. No apologies. No new friends. You're not getting anything out of me. Um, how does Grease Fang react to the party uh, bringing him into this dark back room at Hank Tawashi's? Or Hank Yoshido in Tawashi. All right, guys. There's a poll for you. Get this right, chat. Do not mess this up for us. We just leveled up. <laughs> so he is sitting there, and he is quite st- stolid and uh, not saying much just yet. What preparations or what actions are you going to uh, make as he sits in this office of the garage? Or what would you like to do mm-hmm. otherwise? So we're in, like, are we in the main area with, like, the cars and stuff? No, no, no. Now you're in the back. Uh, Hank got you out of the main area. You are mm-hmm. in a side room. Is can I Hank- head? Is it possible for me to head to the roof so I can keep an eye out? Uh, sure. You can get up on the roof. Okay. I'm going to keep an eye out for intruders and unwelcome folk. Okay. I am staying close by and I am making a big show of my amazing claws. Like I'm doing a lot of like drumming on the desk or like getting out a nail file, you know, just making it very clear how sharp and dangerous I am. So he shouldn't nice. mess with me. <laughs> I love it. Um, so do you stay in the room though, right? Yeah. And Airball, where do you go? Uh, I was thinking of talking to Hank and seeing if we could do anything to upgrade this mind link back. Okay. Mm. So probably in the front area, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay, so that leaves me and Bianca with Grease Fang. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Grease Fang. Uh, so tell me about that weapon that you ordered from Falish. I don't know what you're talking about. We we saw it. That's how we found you. Oh. Uh, awkward. Uh, no, I'm not talking. I'm not talking to you. Would you rather talk what? to the warden? Hmm. Go ahead and make. An intimidation check at advantage um, because the the nail clicking and the disadvantageous situation. 21 and a 6. Oh, yeah. Um, the weapon that we... Listen, I just got out. I was not prepared for uh, this kind of you all rolling up on me like this. Um, I mean, I'm happy to, if we can come to some sort of arrangement, maybe I'll be a little bit more inclined to acquiesce and discuss, but, uh, I'm kind of at a disadvantage here. Um, I'm not, I'm not too keen on, first of all, who are you? Well, and what you, the hell's going on? You said it yourself. You're at a disadvantage, so you're not really in any position to to come to any sort of agreement. But I mean, some pleasantries me would be nice. <laughs> I mean, I, I can let my cat talk to you uh, if you prefer. Mm. Yeah, at that he like darts his eyes over to the nails and is like is very keenly aware of the claws on the table. Um, that appears to. 
hit something quite primal. He, he is a rat person. I expected it too. I think I think uh, Bianca is the best character to have here when we're, we're hunting a, a rat person. That's perfect. I'm just quietly like batting something around now. <laughs> She's just waiting Listen, to get her hands on him. I'm sure we can. Just having uh, fun. I don't it's know my what version kind of, of a fidget spinner. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> uh, what does the poll look like? So the poll is uh, he tries to bribe the party to let him go. Okay. Great. So he looks over at you and he says, uh, I mean, if you're interested in what weaponry and what sort of trade that I have to offer, I mean, we could probably come to some sort of arrangement, you and I, and also her, right? Maybe we could, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm quite a powerful man. Um, whoever is paying you to do this, I'm willing to pay double. Well, you don't look super powerful tied to that chair, but... Perhaps Bianca might want something. The Wanderer has offered to pay us for your return. And also my bosses are a bit interested in you. But, uh, Bianca, what do you think? I'm not that impressed with him, to be honest. He was completely tied up by me in a skirt. First of all, <laughs> I don't know who wouldn't be tied up by you in a skirt. <laughs> Second of all, I... Got out of jail like 12 hours ago. Give me, <laughs> cut me some slack, all right? I have a whole power structure that I was trying to get back in touch with, but it's mm -hmm. not exactly easy when everyone in this town is looking for me, all right? I, I only had a little bit of time. I only had a little bit of resources before everyone started coming for me. So, I, I uh, you know, congratulations, you found me first, all right? But... It, I, like, what can I, what can I say? I mean, I have resources, even though I don't, I might not look super, uh, powerful here in this chair. I am a powerful, powerful Nizumi person. So if you want to make a deal, we can make a deal. Otherwise, you know, my people are going to come for you. And more than that, other people are going to come for me. So good luck getting me back to a Ganjo. You could just get paid now. You could just get paid now. Get paid twice as much. You don't even have to make a delivery. How do we know this uh, isn't some kind of mousetrap? Who said that? You're not in here. I thought you were in the front. <laughs> he is. He is. But he's got, oh. he's got robot hearing. <laughs> How do we know it's not some kind of mouse? Listen, man. It's always, there's always a chance there's a mousetrap. All right? But I'm just saying that if you want to, to to get the cheese, then you could. You got a chance at getting the cheese. I'm not inclined to trust a rat. <laughs> Me neither. <sighs> damn, damn my handsome features. Um, if if gonna... I were to let you go, if big if here, uh, what uh, what would be in in it for me? Um, what does your distribution you... services look like right now? What do my distribution services look like? I mean, once I pay you to get me out, out, of, out of this chair and I can leave, then perhaps we can come to some sort of barter agree agreement. But until such a point as I can reach uh, my contact information, uh, I don't think that we can discuss that much further. Well, it looks like you're going to stay in the chair because I'm not really interested in your couple of, you know, hundred coin here, but I am interested in your organization. Um, all right, keep talking. Well, briefly, we're going to cut to the roof. Um, make a perception check for me. And if you're keeping an eye out for anything in particular, let me know. Hmm. You are plus two. What time, of, what, what time of day is it? Um, This is getting to be evening. We are okay. probably 9 p.m. Okay. I'm, I'm, all right. Well, then I guess I'm looking for anything, like any human 
any kind of uh, creature that doesn't belong, really, uh, isn't moving along at the same kind of pace as everybody else. Not just rats. Gotcha. Looking for all kinds of things. That just Perception. Don't... Yeah. All right. Great. So, plus two. <laughs> no! I rolled a one. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go again. <laughs> I mean, you know that Hanks is in like a relatively populated portion of town. It's not the center of bustling activity, but it is busy enough that there are trams and trains and um, spirit caravans traveling up and down the streets. There are uh, effectively like spirit monorail uh, station relatively nearby. Um, and there is some foot traffic of, you know, people heading to and from downtown to uh, to go to the clubs or get, di- uh, coming home from dinner, um, any sort of that kind of situation. Um, not incredibly populated, but populated enough that you can probably see about maybe a half dozen vehicles and a half dozen people on foot at any given direction that you're looking in the next, you know, block radius, None of it looks particularly shady uh, to you. No one is um, is making any movements that stick out to you, like a you know, like a sore thumb. Mm-mm. I'm pretty sure if I rolled a, a one, I'm basically playing arena on my phone at this point. Yeah, and it's <laughs> it's tough to pick up. It's tough to pick up motives unless people get closer to you or things get closer to you. But um, if anything comes. Uh, closer, I will. Uh, I'll let you let you know, and then we'll do some re-rolling. Great. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the front of house, uh, Airball, you wanted to talk to Hank. Yeah, I'm wondering if he has any upgrades or can do any repairs to the Mindlink Mech. I want his input on the current state of it. Sure. Um, so he's going to take a look at the Mindlink Mech, and he's going to go, "Hooey! Just saying, some just cobbled together, ain't it? This thing ain't." I mean, this thing's pretty unstable. I gotta tell. I gotta be honest with you. Not the greatest piece of machinery I ever seen. Um, it gonna do the job if it need to hit something. Like this will get you through some walls. But uh, I mean, I'm. It's like kind of stuck together with chewing gum at this point. What do you? What you have in mind? What kind of chewing gum are we talking about? Are we talking like no name or like double bubble or juicy fruit? I mean, uh, certainly not juicy fruit. This this thing ain't stuck together with anything closer to that. I mean, I would I would venture to guess that this is this is been there. There's no aftermarket parts on this thing. This thing been made from a. This is a chop shop special. Um, I don't even know how you got it here, honestly. But uh, if you want me to try to upgrade it, I'm happy to take a look and try to make it a little bit more stable. So, actually, I was thinking of the opposite. I was looking for a self-destruct feature in the last episode, and I couldn't find one. Can you tell me how to make this thing blow itself up? I mean, sure. Uh, Probably ain't going to take too much. Uh, I would say if it took a requisite amount of damage, it would probably just start smoking, maybe catch fire. Um. I, I don't know if there's a button on the inside. We could probably rig an explosive to it if you wanted to, uh, or like rig a button that that made the gas tank leak or something like that. If you're more interested in that, I'm thinking big fireworks. Big Let's fireworks. Bring a big explosive to it. All right, I'll see what I got out in the back. If you got anything that you, if you got any fireworks on you, we could put those on it too. I'll see what I got, and he'll go. Uh, he'll go search through. Um, like some of the shelving units, um, and and start searching for uh, fireworks and other explosives. Um, it is very strange to see, you know, a moonfolk. Right? He typically the moonfolk are not known for their hands-on technology um, acumen. They tend to be much more spiritual and traditional. Uh, but you see Hank digging his long fingers through carburetors and nuts and bolts and uh electrical bits and getting his his pure white skin covered in grease and and dirt and he looks right at home looking for all this stuff you can come on over and take a look too if you're interested 
sounds good to me. I don't like to interrupt the man when he's got his greasy hands on all those nuts. <laughs> That's a one of them double entendres. Um, we'll cut back to as you guys go as you guys put your hands on some greasy nuts. We will go back into the interrogation room where uh, Bianca and Jen are having a conversation, having a little chat. Um, you wanted to know more about Grease Fang's structure. Is that correct? Yeah. Go ahead and make a persuasion or intimidation check again, once again at advantage. I was like, I can't intimidate anything. And I was like, oh, wait, that's Varian. Never mind. Uh, 19. Nineteen. Okay. Um, Grease Fang looks up at you, like cocks an eyebrow. His whiskers twitch a little bit. He says, "All right, look. I my goal here is to get out of this chair, right? So I'm going to do what I need to do to get out of this chair, and I'm going to do what I need to do to get the hell away from you." But I think that the easiest way for me to do that is to answer your question as best I can. Because I think once you hear what I'm capable of, you'll understand that letting me out of this chair is going to be in your best interest. Instead of taking me to, you know, what's her name? I have, under my command, hundreds of foot soldiers, spies, thieves. Gang bosses, people who can cause a little anarchy, people who can cause a bit of a ruckus, people who can cheat and steal and get things for me, but also people who can get me powerful things and get me into rooms where powerful people might be willing to make deals. I get the sensation that maybe you'd be interested in something along those lines. I don't think that this is your first time doing an interrogation. So I think that maybe we can come to an arrangement, perhaps not for money. Maybe I was offering the wrong thing. I was offering the wrong thing to you. Well, I, have I should be up offering my... you power, right? Not me, per se. I have to clear this with my uh, fellow companions as well. But uh, you're either going to the warden, as far as I'm concerned, or... You're working for my boss. Who's your boss? Well, you see, my boss is from another plane, but he needs some help with distribution here in Kamigawa. I'm listening. Have you heard of Halo? I've heard of Halo. There's been a brief... I've heard of Halo. That's what I'll say. Well, we are looking to expand our uh, distribution here on Kamigawa, and I think you might just be the rat for the job. I could come to that kind of arrangement. Bianca, what are you doing? I am... Listening, waiting, and hoping I can have an aside with Jen, but I want him to keep talking as long as he wants to keep talking to her. <laughs> I again, I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make any deals with my hands tied behind my back. But I think that what you're offering is very attractive to me. And what I can offer would be very attractive to whoever it is that you work for. Halo, from what I understand, is a very powerful substance that can move mountains. Maybe not here, but maybe someday here. So if you are the connection to me as the kingpin on this plane, we can definitely come to an arrangement there. Once again, we come to the problem, though, of I am tied to this chair. And as long as I'm tied to this chair, you're not going to get anything. Okay, well, 
then you're going to stay tied to the chair. Uh, I don't know what you want me to do. I can't reach my cell phone. <laughs> I can't. I got no casters here to cast message. I got nothing. I got nobody, right? If you want things from me, you're going to have to let me flex my muscles. Well, we, you can do that after you agree. That's fine. Agree uh, to what? Give me the deal. What's the deal? That you're going to distribute? Let's have an aside. We don't need to watch him flex his whiny muscles right now. Fair. Fair. Excuse me. I am... I go to the gym a lot. <laughs> All right. Shush. So, so assuming Fair that enough. my uh, companions agree, uh, you will work for my boss. You you can be the leader here, but you work for someone else. And then you'll distribute Halo and send shipments back to us. I'll let you think about it. And then I'm going to pull... Pull Bianca aside. Okay. Are you staying in the same room or are you going back out to the front room? We're just going in the corner, just out of earshot. I mean, if you think you're out of earshot, then you can whisper. Okay. We can, we can, why don't we like leave the door open so we can see him and just like kind of go a little further into the next room? He's pretty good and tied up. Okay. Um, so, uh, you go back out into the front room to have a little bit of a conversation. Go ahead and. You can do that. What's up? Jen, what are you doing? (laughs) Well, I mean, the Wanderer offered to double the money she gave us, but that's just loose change. I have possibly bigger plans if the team is open to it. Jen, it's a little self-serving, though, don't you think? I mean, this only benefits you. This doesn't benefit the team. Why not? The the whole team can benefit from it, is what I'm saying. That's why I was going to clear it with you guys first. Uh, but the whole team can benefit. You definitely benefit. Well, whatever we set up here, Obnixilis pays the team, and we all get paid. I think If Obnixilis this is will... about power, though, we're working for the Emperor right now. How much more power do you want? I mean, we're the Emperor's errand... Aaron boys, but uh, but that's not exactly end game, is it? This he's a bad guy. Don't you want him off the streets? I mean, these aren't my streets. Um, Bianca, make a history check for me. Okay. Um, just roll a d twenty. Yeah, and then add history if you have any bonus to it. I got a 19 plus zero. (laughs) Nice. I believe this is the first time that Jen has said the name Obnixilis to you. Okay. Um, And that is a name that I'm not sure you've heard of before. But with a 19, I'm going to let you choose. Um... Bianca has been to several planes upon which Obnixilis has also traveled. So your interaction may, you may be aware of Obnixilis. And you know that Obnixilis is also not a good guy. Maybe not as bad as Greasefang, maybe worse than Greasefang. You don't necessarily have great context as it pertains to Obnixilis. Um, but you are vaguely aware of this entity. Okay. Look, Jen, I don't know much about Obnixilis, but from what I've heard, he's not a great guy either. Like, who are you even hanging around with these days? Like, I know we were out of touch for a while, and now we're back together as a team, but I don't even know the circles you're traveling in anymore. Did we know each other before this? Did I miss that part? I thought we did jobs before. <laughs> I would say that you guys have probably done other jobs in sure. the past. Okay. Um, I mean, I've always, for as long as uh, you've known me, I've always been working for my boss. I, uh, this is just what my plane is like. I, I've tried to stay out of your business. I don't ask a lot of questions, but... I'm concerned about you as a friend. 
Uh, Airball, go ahead and make perception check. Since you're technically in the same room, but you're a couple dozen feet away. Sure. Nerd girl, can you roll for me? An 11. Plus four. Okay. I will say that you were not paying attention to this conversation until now. Now, now that you're hearing a little bit of a change in tone in their conversation, airball, you can tune into whatever else is said in this conversation. Okay. You don't need to worry about me. This is what I've always done. This is literally my job. Who I'm working for is irrelevant. Okay, fair enough. And, but and our mission as a team was to pick up a bad guy and put him back in the hands of the authorities here on this plane. And if that's what everybody wants to do, I'm okay with that. But I think there's a bigger score to be had. What are we talking about here? Why is no one watching the mouse? <laughs> the mouse? You know, evil mouse. The mouseketeer is still tied up. It's fine. <laughs> Tell um, me what you guys were discussing. So I was pursuing other options of what we could do with said mouse and see if we possibly could make more money out of this deal. Um, but Bianca is hesitant, and that's totally cool, and we might not be wanting to, to pursue this venture. I think we should probably get... Uh, very in in here and see what we want to do with this mouse. I think I saw him playing on his phone. <laughs> Cut to the roof. Very in, go ahead and uh, make another perception check for me. You're muted, You're by muted. the way. Muted. <laughs> okay. Go. Nerd girl, I want you to roll this because if I'm going to hit any more ones, I want people to see it. <laughs> Just throw the dice away. You rolled an Just eight. <laughs> and your an perception eight. is plus two, so ten. Okay. Ten's pretty good. Ten is like you're still scared. You know, you are you got a little bit distracted by a party bus that was driving by. Um, probably had a bachelorette party in it. But now you're back to being focused and you're looking around and you're looking for uh, shapes and things that that are a little bit different and a little bit strange. And um, you do see that there appears to be some sort of large shape um, of either a spirit or an animal making a, not a, not a run. It is patiently moving directly, like diagonal across an empty lot directly toward Hank Yoshida's. Um, this being is probably the size of a small mech, um, not huge, um, but it has it, but it is dark and you can't really make out details of it in the current lighting situation. Uh, uh, and that's when you hear your compatriots call for you, uh, to perhaps join in the conversation. I should ignore them. I should ignore them. Nah, I'm just going to go down and join the conversation. <laughs> okay. Varian, <laughs> uh, Very, we, need, we need your help. All right. I, I, I know that you need my help, but what do you need my help with now? Oh, my gosh. Varian, Jen doesn't want to turn in the rat anymore. She wants to put him into her own operation selling drugs on this plane. It's I, not I drugs. Not drugs. Dust. We've been told that it's not drugs. Wizards Definitely not drugs. Angel dust. Oh, Explicitly that's way said this is not well, drugs. Jen, I don't know your business. I'm just going to, okay, if you're saying it's not drugs, then it's it's not drugs. I just have your word for it then. And Wizards of the Coasts. Uh -huh. Sure. So, uh, is, who? It, what? It, it, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so other organizations I'm not aware of. Who are you working for, Jen? So, so the Wanderer offered us double the money that she gave us, right? So she gave us a uh, hundred gold, and she's willing to give us another hundred gold when we finish this job. However, I think we can make a much bigger score by selling the rat's loyalty to my boss back on Capenna. 
that's what I would like to do. But again, if the group isn't interested, we can go ahead and walk uh, to the next town and, and turn the mouse boy into the wanderer. What does bigger mean? I, th I, I cannot say for sure, but it'll be a heck yes. of a lot more than 100 gold. 4x? That and probably a lot of power. And what are you going to tell the wanderer? Nothing. We will just leave. Or we could say that he got away. If we leave and tell the wanderer nothing, she'll keep sending people after Greasefang. And then when the halo isn't being sold, we have, like, there's no reason that whoever you're working for is going to pay up. So we would have to do something to make sure that Grease Fang's off the radar. Okay, then why don't we just kill I'm, another rat that looks like him, throw his dead body on our doorstep, and then we can take off. What do you get out of this? It's not just the money, is it? Well, I'm hoping we all get the same thing out of it. A lot of money and a lot of power. To be fair, it's on my home plane, but like, if you guys have a better idea of what to do with him, I'm all ears. Robot, box of rocks, I'm carn concerned incarnate. What, <laughs> I'm concerned about what distributing drugs on the streets of Kamigawa will do. It might destabilize all of the existing gangs and might create chaos where there's even less power than before. But the power will go towards Zubnixilis. He'll have a foothold here in Kamigawa that he doesn't have, which will make him a lot more powerful than the other bosses on Kapena. And he will reward us handsomely for it. That's true. Now apparently it's not drugs two, anyway. Now you two roll history to see if you've heard of Obnixilis. All right, I got mine. What's 13. 13 plus what one. What was that? 13 plus 13. one, 14? Okay. Yep. Uh, and then air balls. Nerd girl. Oh, sorry. Air ball did not do very well. Hmm. Um, Plus four to whatever you got. Nine. Okay. Okay. Um, Airball. Obnixilis is a name that is in your database, but you have managed to not pick up a ton of information on during your time. Um, while you have knowledge of planes, and Obnixilis has been to many planes, it's like ships passing in the night. The details are fuzzy at best. Um, you don't have a ton of information on who this Obnixilis person is. Varian, um, you have a little bit more knowledge of Obnixilis from your time on Dominaria because while, um, he, while Obnixilis himself has not been to Dominaria, uh, Obnixilis did once acquire the Chain Veil and the Chain Veil then was passed along to someone from Dominaria. And you are aware of the power of that artifact and the power of planeswalkers that wield it and the evil therein and things along those lines. Obnixilis is a character that you, do again, do not have direct interaction with, but this is kind of a ghost story, uh, a tale that, that planeswalkers tell their children, uh, you know, Better eat your vegetables or Ob Obnixilis will, will, uh, will show up in, on your doorstep. Am I aware he's a demon? I would say so. I would say that that's a pretty safe assumption. Didn't you also have mm. demon? Didn't you also speak demon or something? <laughs> I think yeah. that would increase uh, the chances that you did. You had... As the abyssal. deep speech. Oh, yeah. deep speech. Okay. Yeah. See, um, I am a haunted one and I, I have a... I, I don't know who did it, but I have a certain memory of something terrible that certainly smells like a demon could have so, done it. So, real quick, guys, this will be a good time to take our, like, five-ish minute break. So if you guys need to get up, go ahead and mute your mics, do whatever you got to do, and uh, then we'll come back. Before we do that, I'm going to say that the figure that was approaching the building is now here. And you hear a large animal of some kind tearing into the into the back of the building and tear open a hole in the back of Hank Yoshido's and you just see a big grizzly bear okay coming into Great. the back of Hank Yoshido's and we'll roll Looking initiative when we come it. back okay <laughs>
Yes. Oh my gosh. It's just a tutu. It's just a tutu. <laughs> it's just a tutu. Maybe with some upside. Maybe. So whether you guys go for it or not, totally doesn't matter. Um, I was thinking because our plan for season two is to jump to Capenna, that this is kind of a cool transition is my, my character's idea. But again, we shouldn't do it for the story, but I came up with the idea for the story. <laughs> oh, I'm. It, if you're giving me two more sentences, I was going to demand we go to Capenna now. <laughs> I, I think we should like turn, you know, Grease Fang into our like angel dust uh, pack mule and then go talk to Obnixilis and get an in. And I think that would put us like in the center of the Capenna story with uh, us being like very highly ranking in his army. It's a very good plan. It is going to put you on the Wanderer's shit list. Even and better. by connection, anyone who operates the plane jumpers. So you're going to be in kind of like a Mission Impossible kind of situation if you do that. What do you think, chat? What do you guys think of my idea? A double cross on up Nick's list. I'm trying to uh, double cross the Wanderer. We could say we've got blackmail from that time Gideon was riding him. We've got pictures. Huh? It's like an uh, old magic card where, he, where Gideon is oh, riding right. a Pixelus. I forget what it is. No, that's Rakdos. Oh, is it Rakdos? Oh. Well, it doesn't matter. We can make it a deep fake or something. Pretend yeah, it's all that's true. We could deep fake the magic card unlikely aid to be Obnixilus instead of Rakdos. I like this. Mm. Not enough um, deep fake fraud in Dungeons and Dragons is what I have to say. It's an unexplored space. <laughs> I mean, if we're if we're going to go to Capenna, you know, in the next season, what better uh, way to do that? It's true. And we'll catch up nicely timeline wise if we were to do eight episodes, because this is the four month gap between the sets. So, you know, even though we're starting late, we have more than enough time to do the eight episodes. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see what your characters decide. Don't worry, there will be story regardless of what you choose. Yeah. But this is, of course, this is taking the reins in a way that I was not expecting. So I, I appreciate the, uh, the storytelling. I, I kind of had it in the back of my head the whole time that I wasn't going to do what the Wanderer wanted. Originally, I was going to, I tied that guy up in the sewer, and I was going to hand Grease Fang over to their gang mm. and try to make more money that way. But uh, but that, that option got cut off, so I don't know. Selling him to, you know, Obnixilis and putting him under Obnixilis' banner seems pretty legit. Um, also, Gina, I'm I when I was just joking about it not being a drug, it wasn't against you. It was an actual joke because Wizards of the Coast. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, make, I know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they did make this very drug-like substance, but they are very, very clear that it is not. Right, <laughs> it's a dust I, I made from angels. Having fun with the joke. Good, yes, good. I'm just making sure. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't whatever. sure if you were, you know, kept up on a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff. So, are we ready to like jump a, back in? I think it's like a, a, a dust that's like caffeine. Angel dust gets you energized. It gives you wings. Yeah, it gives you... Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, brother. Uh, are we ready to jump back in? I am ready to jump back in. Everybody good? Yeah, go for it. Well, everybody, as this large bear bursts in through the wall, we're going to roll initiative. Twenty. Wow, that's a high number. Ew. Mine is a nine, and Varian's is a ten. No, no, no. I rolled my own. Oh, sorry. I meant airballs. Okay. Airballs ten, and Jen is nine, and yours was a was it two? Mm-hmm. 
Sounds like the bear is going to get to clobber us at least once. I roll the 20. Let's go. All right. Varian, you are going to be up first. This animal uh, tears open the wall in the back of Hank's shop. Um, I'm going to say that a, a gaping hole big enough for the bear to see inside of the office and of the conference room where Grease Fang is opens and you can see through the door into the conference room this giant animal um and that's what you see hmm. uh this bear hmm. is not just a bear by the way it does appear to have like skin made of bark almost sort of like a ba- like a tree bear hmm. <laughs> oh, man, man. <laughs> Man bear <laughs> okay. I, I don't think I have a lot of I, I guess I don't know of a lot of things like actions that you can do other than attack things. Throw a bunny but at I, it. I mean I have the rabbit battery. Um I have a dash disengage or hide cunning action I can take. Um I don't know what I would be doing with any of that. So if you hid and then attacked, that would grant you advantage on the attack. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, If you attacked and then hid, it wouldn't, and successfully hid, it wouldn't know where you were. Um, Disengage would allow you to go up to it, hit it, disengage, and back away without getting attacks of opportunity. And then dash, of course, allows you to use your movement speed. Um, not necessarily necessary in this closed quarters here, but those are what those abilities do. And I, I'm just going to assume we wouldn't be rolling for initiative if it were here to be nice. Like we, I, like my, my senses should be tingling that we're under attack, right? It, that is a safe assumption. Animal okay. friendship I, does not have a chance here. I'm last. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, um, can I just quickly use my like? knowledge of Kamigawa to say to tell whether grizzly bears are common in Igancho or wherever I would allow that to happen you can either do uh you can either do animal handling you could do history you could do arcana if you needed to think of magical bears okay let's think let's do an arcana check because I have plus four I want to know if this is like a common thing if grizzly bears just walk into warehouses sure seven Seven. Plus four. No, that, that's included. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. With an ar- a seven arcana, you would know that it is not usual for bears to just tear open the backs of garages. <laughs> um, you don't have any specific knowledge of the fauna of Kamigawa as it pertains to bears. Um, this definitely does not feel like a spirit. Being a very animated plane, uh, I, I've just, have we noticed any kind of a, uh, weird stamp on the belly that would allow it to have magical, uh, bear carrying powers? Oh, um, you do not have enough view of its belly to see. Okay. So possibly if it has a care mark. Okay, <laughs> might still have a care mark. Good. Could have a care mark. This could be this could be All right. tear bear because it tore open the All right. So um, be ready for the nice. care bear stare yeah. anytime. Uh care bear so, tear. <laughs> so that is the information I'm going to give you is that this is not something none of you have seen anything like this on Kamigawa before. This is neither spirit nor anything you've really dealt with in the past. That's basically right. what I'm that's what I'm going to give you. I will hide, and we're going to take a short bow uh, shot right at this sucker. So bonus action hide, action shoot the short bow. Uh, Go ahead and roll at advantage. First roll is a six. Second roll is a two. Okay. (laughs) And you have plus five, so your highest is an 11. Okay. So the short bow shot appears to hit the bear but does no damage to it um the the, your short bow uh finds a very thick piece of wood and buries itself into the piece of wood causing no damage all right that's me 
All right. It will now be the bear's turn. The bear uh, is going to tear open a bigger hole to be able to get in and is going to look around and smell specifically because it has advantage on smell checks. And it is going to smell where Grease Fang is. And the bear is going to tear a hole in the wall, see Grease Fang, grab the back of the chair, and pull it out the back of the building. Is the whole size of the whole building? Uh, the bear? The bear yeah. is like 10 by 10 square, so probably an 8 foot tall bear. I demand it now be called the tear bear. Okay, the so tear did bear? it have to go through past me to get to the back? I would say that's fair. I would say you can uh, have an attack of opportunity. Great. I, I, I would very much like to do that. Uh, I'm going to attempt to... Uh, should we try to divine smite it? When you, well, if, so if you, would, you need... If you hit, yes. Yeah. So let's go ahead uh, and be attack... Bianca, I would say that you were standing next to Jen. You would also get an attack of opportunity here if you wanted. I would like to... Well, I, I'll wait for you to roll. I failed. I got a 10. Okay. Okay. 10 is... Um, so you, you do have the attack of opportunity, but you're it's so quick. It all happens so fast that your sword, similar to the, to the short bow, it does hit the bear, but there is no effect. It sort of splinters uh, off some of the wood. Bianca, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I would like to do my first combat wild shape. And since the grizzly so, bear has... Oh. So this so uh, this would be just an attack of opportunity. Okay, so I can't do a bonus action right now? Can't do a bonus action transform. right now. Only reactions. Okay. So okay. you could swing at it, or if you have another reaction. This doesn't count do as your turn. What this is, is that the monster came too close to you, that it lets you get an extra attack. Correct. Okay, then, uh, spear. Okay. Stick them with the pointy end. All right, so is it 1d8 plus 1? So or? 1d, so the, you would roll to see if you hit first. You have a plus uh, 3 for your spear. It's, uh, it's near where the, so when you look at your range next to that, it says mm -hmm. hit slash dc plus 3 for spear. That's what you add to your d20. Okay, so just roll a d20. Mm -hmm. Okay. 18. 18 will hit. Go ahead. Now you would roll your damage, which is the d8 plus one. All right. Um, that's a six. So All plus right. one. Takes six. Uh, so takes seven. Yeah. All righty. Um, you're able to find purchase between some of the, the shingles uh, okay. and get the spear in there as the bear rushes past you. Um, it does look like you've dealt the bear some damage um, and it, it bleeds a little bit on the ground as it rushes past you. Um, but it is dragging the chair that has Grease Fang in it out the back of the building and Grease Fang goes, I didn't, I didn't make a deal with the bear. This is not what I... Somebody help me, please. <laughs> um, and the bear, with surprising intelligence, is here on a mission. And that's its turn. Okay. Uh, next up is going to be Airball. It's still, like, kind of in the building, right? Like, within range it of is. us? Okay. It would still be in range of you, yes. It's only, it, uh, in order to drag something, you move at half speed. And even though this bear has a faster speed than a normal walking speed, it took some amount of time to get in and then took uh, some amount of time to get out. So it's basically still on the threshold of the hole that it made. Okay. Okay. Am I in the mech or no? Uh, I would say you're not in the mech right now. You were digging through um, nuts. The greasy bits. nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um would getting into the mech take my action? Getting into the mech is an action, yes. And that's it for my turn. I can't do anything else. Uh, unless you have a bonus action. You would have a move with the mech. Okay, let's go Power Ranger it up. Let's hop in the mech and move towards Grease Fang. Okay. Uh, you hop in the mech, action, turn the key. Chug, 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 chug. And um, now that there's a hole in this building... You can just make another hole in this building. So you are able to uh, 
go through the regular size door and get right up next to this bear. Um, it is not going, you're not going to have an attack, but you do have a bonus action if you have it. Anything. Okay. Uh, and just for my information, was Hank able to finish his upgrades on the mech? Uh, not this quickly, no. Uh, he was still digging through uh, stuff. This would have taken a, probably a, a long rest to be able to upgrade the mech. Um, and it's only been, you know, half hour, 45 minutes. Um, Hank is now looking at his shop being torn apart and said, this is, this is what I was worried about. I didn't want this to happen here. I am, I'm going to retire. I'm going to retire and I am going to make a mech shop far outside this city. We've ruined um, a man's life. Okay. Um, can I, no, it's fine. Uh, we can rebuild it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um so for bonus actions uh that's that's just any action i can take with my own character or is there some special limitation to that there is a limitation to bonus actions depending on what your character is capable of doing with bonus actions if you click to your actions screen on D, &D beyond um there will be a sub section called bonus actions you have two um, weapon fighting is your only bonus action Got it. So the two weapon fighting bonus oh. action allows you. Sorry, I, I lied. That's I keep mixing up airball and variance character. Um, <laughs> I you're right for me too. I think that's the same for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, also it's only the same. two weapon fighting for me. Okay. Yeah. Which means that when you use your action to attack with a weapon, you may then use your bonus action to attack with an offhanded weapon. Got it. Um, your action this turn was starting your car, so you would not get to use that particular bonus action. Okay, so that's it for me. But you are right up next to it, so you would get <laughs> attacks of opportunity if it tried to leave your range. Um, Jen, you're up next. All right. Um, <clears throat> so she stuck him with a pointy end, so it looks like she's got that under control. So uh, I am going to lunge forward and try to grab the chair i'm gonna i'm gonna try to wrestle the bear for this chair and get excellent get grease fang loose while everybody else is attacking the bear okay um easy enough to do you don't even need to make a check to grab the chair um it will take your action but you did grab the chair so Great. you have it grabbed did i did, can i pull on it to slow the bear sure. from taking him basically is my let's, goal. Let's do an opposed strength check now to see who tugs better. Uh oh. Just... I have rolled a natural twenty on my strength check. Oh fudge sickles. <laughs> Come on, you got I this. I did not roll a natural twenty. I rolled a fifteen if it's just straight strength. It is a it is a strength. I would let you do athletics. Still not a twenty um, though. Yeah, I rolled 17. a twenty-two. Uh, okay, so you get a good grip on it, and you tug, but the bear is uh, is going to hold firm to it. And as soon as you come up, you make eye contact with this bear, and the bear looks at you, and you sense in this bear intelligence. Um, you also see, you see that there is something behind the eyes of this bear and the bear's eyes shine a, a, a interesting shimmering green, uh, that reflects off of the lights inside of the building as well. Um, should it does I, not look. Should I do a nature or arc arcana check by chance? Um, you can do a nature check or you can do an insight check is what I would say. Okay. I have a little, yeah. I have plus one to nature. Oh, six. God, I suck today. <laughs> it's a bear. Um, <laughs> but you have a hold of the chair. You Great. still have a hold of the chair. You don't pull it back into the room, but but the bear is going to have to do something about this. Me. Great. <laughs> That's good enough. Uh, Bianca. Yes. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Um, now I would like to use my first combat wild shape. Uh, because I can see this bear, and the grizzly bear has no natural predators other than other grizzly bears, pretty much. So I would like to become a grizzly bear just as big, maybe even a little bigger, if you'll let me. Uh, but to make sure that my friends do not get confused, uh, my grizzly bear 
still keeps a little braid hanging down and I'm still wearing the necklace pendant with the leaf on it. <laughs> Excellent. Um, with combat wild shape, what is the maximum uh, CR or challenge rating that you can be? Uh, I don't know. I believe that you Was can that be too a big? challenge. No, 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 you're fine. I believe that you can be a challenge rating one. So okay. I'm going to let you be the same type of bear that I am, which is a brown bear. And I've okay. linked that in our chat so that you can see the statistics. Okay. Uh, is that your turn? Oh, that was your bonus oh. action. Yes. So you actually have um, a full action now as a brown bear. Okay. Um, Kaiju fight with bears. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my action is going to be um, to like charge forward and dig into it with claws to make sure it doesn't drag back any further to help out Jen with getting the chair away from him. <laughs> okay. Do you want to, are you trying to dig your claws into the bear itself? Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just slashing at the chest, like in okay. such a way that you should let go of the thing you have to protect yourself. Great. Go ahead and make, uh, so you get actually, as a brown bear, you get to make two attack rolls, hmm. one with okay. your bite and one with your claws. So roll a d20 and add six to it and do that twice. 14. That one will 15. miss. So the bite, oh, both of them are going to miss. Uh, oh. Because of the bark skin that this other bear has uh, currently on it. So you are able to hack and slash and, you know, get your tooth down on a corner of one of the planks of this, uh, of this uh tree bark bear but you're not able to get any real damage through to it you are right up on it though and it is now uh it also shoots you a glance with its piercing green eyes uh that belie some sort of uh, uh different uh, energy behind it than just your average just your average bear um can i do a some sort of a nature check I would say I can learn nature, animal handling, insight. All of these are possible. Oh, animal and, handling is my best one. And just to clarify that you, the numbers you gave were plus six, including your six. Oh, I the rolls were 14 and 15. So plus six oh. for each of those would be 20 and 21. Great. Let's do damage then. That's why I was okay. clarifying because <laughs> Thank you. both CGB and Covert Gogina have been giving just their rolls first. Got yeah. it. So okay. just as a heads up, the DM will almost always think that that's with your bonus. Okay. Right. Yeah. Whatever numbers I get, I'm I I'm I'm doing my own math, so I, I'm not going to do your math as well. Yeah, um, so but twenty and, and twenty one both hit. The bite does go through, and the claws do go through, and it looks like it causes a good amount of damage. The bite is going to be a D eight plus four piercing damage. And the claws are going to be 2d6 plus 4 oh. slashing damage. So go ahead and roll a d8 and roll 2d6. The d8 is a 7 plus what you just said, plus 4, four plus so four. 11. Okay. And, and then 2d6 plus 4. Okay. <laughs> a 2 and a 1 plus 4. So 7 more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, deals a lot of damage to this, to the tree. Okay. Um, can I still do my animal handling check to yes. see what I can learn? Go ahead. That's uh, 18 plus 4, 22. Okay. With your eight, with your 22, um, you've just come into this new ability of being able to turn into a bear and you have also figured out a way to make it so that other, your compatriots can see that you are not just a bear wandering in the woods. And you look at this bear across from you and you are certain that it is also a druid that has turned into a bear. Okay. Ooh. We shouldn't be fighting. Intrigue. <laughs> 
Also, can I just say, I thought I was going to deal the damage in this party, but Bianca's been kicking my ass in every fight. Once, once you get, I mean, listen, smites deal the most damage. <laughs> once you get a smite in, it feels good. Um, but yes, brown bear, no joke. Also. All right. So you, you do recognize a kindred spirit across from you, even though it is rage induced. Um, and it's can also I talk apparently to it as a free action. Sure. Well, you're a bear, so you can talk to it as a bear. Uh, <laughs> who are uh, you? Uh, <laughs> yeah. T- do your bear talk to me as a bear? Uh, yeah, we'll talk to each other as bears. Who are you? Dungeons and Dragons. And dragons. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. Let's have a conversation. I'm. I'm trying. <laughs> Very embarrassing. (laughs) (laughs) Who are you? What do you mean, who am I? Who are you? I can tell you're a druid. I'm a druid, too. I can see that. But this one belongs to me. (laughs) So we're all just standing there and the bears just start grunting at each other. Yeah. You don't have to do this. Who do you work for? <laughs> hmm. Interesting question. Who do I work for? I. Hmm. I protect Kamigawa from people like Grease Fang. I. He needs to be. <coughs> This voice hurts my throat. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, you can unbear a little bit, yeah. I think. I need him off the streets. He rips apart the spirit realm. He uses technology and is dangerous. <coughs> I I make meaningful eye contact with you. Like, we're on the same side. I want that too. I hate this guy. I want to turn him in. We're trying to turn him in. Okay. <laughs> that will be resolved on the bears next turn. Varian, <laughs> top of the round. <clears throat> oh, man, I, I don't feel like combat. I don't feel like I can deal damage to this thing, so I'm trying to think, think of a smart move that can, I don't know, be useful. You do something um, that helps get Grease Fang away from him? Right. So he's... Grease Fang right now is in a chair, tied up. The chair is in a tug-of-war. Jen has a hold of it. Yep. And appears to be a kind of a stalemate with this, mm-hmm. uh, with this bear. All right. Um, this, so I have some rope. Could a bear just tear that easily? Um, <clears throat> it probably could, but it would take an action to do so. All right. I want to try to tie, uh, maybe I can throw like the other side of the rope to Jen and she can tie the chair slash grease fang, uh, on her end. And I can tie it down to something huge, like the biggest freaking vehicle in the shop. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you can use your turn, uh, doing rope use, uh, tying, <clears throat> uh, tying a lasso around. You want to tie around Grease Fang? That's. I think we should. I think if we t- tied it to the chair, uh, I think the chair might just get broken or something. Well, so. he's so in the chair, so this you can fight... wrap it around him in the back of the chair. You know what I mean? Like around yeah. the center. Yeah. 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 So while this fight is happening, I do want to just point out Grease Fang's situation, which is <laughs> okay. he has been incapacitated and kind of almost drowning recently and then dragged to this auto body shop still tied up by Bianca's um, uh, karaoke performance slash binds. He was then interrogated briefly and then made like a pretty decent business deal in his mind. Then a bear came through the wall, started dragging him out of the building, and now he's being, he is 
his chair is being tugged on by two people and a rope, and there's another bear. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> He's going to want to go back. a totally to normal day. He's going to want to go back to jail when we're all done. Yeah. He's getting This switched. is not great. I kind of hate this. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, Varian, you use your turn to uh, tie some rope um and make sure that uh jen is going to have a better opportunity i'm going to say that that's a help action for okay. jen going forward okay uh okay so and i tie the other end of it to just something mm -hmm. huge or stable um well, yeah. i'm not sure exactly what's close to me but <clears throat> you know something that's not gonna break easy do right. i also need an action to launch the battery um it is an action to reconfigure yes Okay, then. I'm done. Cool. Um, it is now going to be the bear's turn. The bear has another bear next to it, so it is actually going to attack the other bear instead of trying to continue to pull the um, chair along with it. Does he let it go to attack with its <clears throat> claws? Um, so it has... Uh, yes, it would. The phrasing here says that it makes two attack, one with its bite and one with its claws, which means I think that it lets go of both. So, first attack, Bianca, um, 23 to hit. And the second attack, I don't know what, uh, so the bear's armor class, oh, the bear's armor class is 11. So I'm going to hit with both of these. So <clears throat> I'm going to deal you, that's the max. Uh, 12 piercing damage to your bear form and 13 slashing damage to your bear bear form. Does her so hit points 12... go up to the bear hit points too? So your hit points are the same and then the bears go on top of that. Okay, oh, so my God. hit points right now are 17 plus 34. Correct. And the Good. 34 I just is what's 25 the damage. Right, so okay. you just took 25 damage. You took 25 bear damage. Yes. <laughs> As it, it turns its ire on you, and it says, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you're from, but I need this one, and I need to bring it back to Jukai and make it pay for what it's done. Do I know who Jukai is? <laughs> uh, make a history check for me. <clears throat> Pretty low. <laughs> I'm really glad it didn't hit me. Ten? Uh, ten? Yeah, Jukai is one of the states, one of the regions of Kamigawa. The okay. Jukai Forest <clears throat> is where uh, many of the, um, the, particularly the Druids and uh, naturalists and uh, rangers and people like that live. Hmm. Okay. It's very, it's a very spiritually centered location as opposed to places like Sokanzan and even Takanuma, um, which are much more technological, uh, technologically advanced. Um, so I, not to rewind or anything, but I was right next to him. Did I get to take, make an attack of opportunity when the bear tried to attack uh, Bianca? Or no? uh, so it did not move. It did not move. Okay. So it has not moved out of your range, so no attack of opportunity. Okay. Um, that will be <clears throat> the bear's turn. It is now Airball's turn, though. So I'm wondering, um, is it clear to me where this druid is trying to take Grease Fang? Like, he's not going to like put him on his bear back and go all the way to Jukai. It's probably some sort of vehicle transport something if you want to look for where you think this bear is trying to take grease fang you can go ahead and make a perception check at disadvantage would that or investigation or investigation would that would that prevent me from attacking no okay, <clears throat> you can just take a glance out the window and see what see what you see all right investigation Ooh. oh we take the lower of the two right correct yeah. all right so that would be a 17 Okay, 17 is pretty good, considering that you're in the middle of combat. <clears throat> you look behind this great black bear, and you see, um, or brown bear, sorry, you see um, off in the distance some uh, beings that are 
waiting around a cart, not even a vehicle. They're waiting around a cart. And um, with a 17, I would allow you to see that they appear to be Orochi people. These, these are the snake people of Kamigawa. The druid's lying to us, then. He's not trying to take him back to the druid people because... He's trying to serve these snake people instead, I assume. I think snake people the, the would live snakes with are druids. druids. Yep, snake druids. Oh, okay. oh do I, I, I don't know that. I'm just talking magic card stuff. He, you right. should know that. You're the history. Thing. Is it a 1-1 one, one death touch snake druid? It is. It would be 1-1 one, one death touch snake druids. Nice. Um, the ones that are waiting by the cart would be 1-1 one, one snake druids. Okay. Um, do you happen to know what the, the Do you happen to know what the one one snake druid card is? Oh God, no! I'm a zoomer. This you're talking about this Kamigawa card, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, its one- name oh. is Fang of Shigeki. Oh. I didn't know its name. That's true. Uh, I'm like Sh- this is this may be Shigeki that you are facing down right now. Oh, Ooh. Shigeki is the, the one. Is that the one three? That's the yeah. one three. Wow. Okay. Cool. I just like to whirlwind kick off this. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, now, I mean, I'll tell you, this is Shigeki, and Shigeki has turned into a bear and cast bark skin on themselves and is trying to pull Grease Fang over to their compatriots. I love this use of the card, like other cards I was not expecting. This is really cool. Well done. I appreciate that. <clears throat> okay. Then um, can I, as my movement, position myself between Shigeki and that cart? Uh, and yes, then, you can. And then you can Shigeki. you could definitely scoot around Shigeki. Well, actually, you're in the mech, aren't you? Yeah. I would need a athletics check to scoot around, or an attack roll to just bash some building in to be able to get to the other side. Let me check my athletics. My athletics is plus one. What do you think, team? Do I do that or do I knock down a building? Knock down I mean, building. You're in a mech. Why would you not walk, knock down a building? Let's I go. Know. I mean, Hank is already upset with me. Let, let's go. <clears throat> let's try to take down the building. Sure, man. If I'm going to be collecting some insurance, I might as well get the whole kit and caboodle. Know what I mean? You rolled a six. I, I, I don't I, know I what do. you're putting it to. It was to attack. Um, I don't know what to do with it. Oh, that. if you're attacking, you hit, it's a building. You hit the building. Um, <clears throat> and you are able to scoot around the backside of this bear. Okay, and now I can attack the bear, right? Or- uh, you Yes, because you used your turn to attack. So now you can use your bonus action yes. to attack the bear. Okay. Give him the business. Uh, you rolled a seven. I'm not sure what your mech uh, uh, plus to hit would be. Um, I believe it's a plus six. So a 13 is not going to hit. Okay. Um, so, and by, by not hit, I mean, it's huge. You are hitting it, but you hit the outside of the bark skin and it doesn't have the damaging effect that you would hope for. Um, Jen, it's your turn. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead. And so he let the bear let go of the chair. So now I'm going to attempt to take a big swing at it to distract it from my dear friend who just took quite the clawing to the face. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. So let's let's really hope that I can get a good swing in here. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, Okay, 21 to hit. 21 hits. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to use one of my my first spells. What the heck was it? It was under spells. Here it is. It's a first level spell. Check that. So you're going to use a smite. Yes, divine smite. Excellent. So the way that divine smite works is you just... Expend the spell slot, free action, and it adds it to the damage. So go ahead and roll your 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 smite and your attack. So it uh, deals two d8 extra radiant damage to the target, plus one d8 for each 
spell level higher than the first, which I don't have. So Correct. it's just 2d8 on top of my 1d10 plus 2? Sure is. Wow. Oh, yeah. Shoot. I'm telling you, smite is where it's at. All right, so I rolled a 6 for my d10. And then okay. we do 2d8s. So we'll add it to 10, and we add it only to 1. Oh, 11 damage. 11 damage total or total. 11 to the, plus the 6? Total. Total 11. Then your attack bonus, right? So you, you all, so it's a, your normal attack is a d6 plus a number. My normal attack is a d10 plus 2. Plus 2. I rolled so a 4, 11. so that was 6. Yep. And then I rolled a 4 and a 1. Got it. So it's 12. I counted 11. Am I wrong? I don't know. I think that, well, it's fine. In any case, <laughs> you are able to put enough damage into the bear form that <clears throat> this druid has to drop the bear form. Uh, the bear form has now been defeated. And uh, in the uh, space where the bear form once was, you now see an Orochi. Um, who is uh, standing before you, angry with the face uh, of, a, of a very angry person in front of you, um, and is sort of hissing and baring its fangs and being quite upset. So it, uh, it does take a little bit of hangover damage from that, um, <clears throat> but it is... Not necessarily looking the worst for wear. Uh, Bianca, you know, as a druid, that this person probably has an additional wild shape that they could cast, should, so, should they so choose. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, um, Jen, did you have anything else you wanted to do? Um, no, I hit it two-handed, so I don't have an offhand for my bonus action, so I don't think there's anything I can do. Okay. Uh, and Bianca, it is your turn. You now are facing down uh, Shigeki the, in, in all of their glory. Um, Four-armed snake druid person um, who you've never met before, so... Okay, um, quick question of clarification. If I get attacked and I lose the last nine... I have as the bear. Do I pass out or just drop the bear? <clears throat> you just drop the bear. It's okay. like temporary hit points. As soon as you lose the bear, you go back to being yourself. All right. So I will continue another turn as the bear while okay. I have bear form. Um, first, because I'm I'm really mad that we like our communication really broke down between druids. Like I thought we had something and mm -hmm. we didn't. Yep. Um, so first I'm going to use my bonus action and I'm going to roar in his face. Okay. To put him, try to put him at a disadvantage for anything that goes forward. I will accept that. I will, uh, I will consider rolling at disadvantage, particularly if you're trying to, <clears throat> uh, do something social. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think... He'll understand me anymore if I try to talk bear to him. So the roar is just meaningful enough, right? <laughs> well, you would be surprised. First of all, this is a druid person. Okay. So <clears throat> the rest of you were all hearing bear growls, but the two druids were speaking druidic to each other. Mm -hmm. Right? So you can understand druid even if it's being spoken by a bear. And you can okay. speak to, to a druid even if they are a bear. Hmm. Okay, then. So, I, I roared. Uh, like, I'm trying to do the right thing here, and you're messing it up. <laughs> what do you mean you're trying to do the right thing? This guy is gonna be in big trouble. He's gonna serve time. He's gonna get the worst. I will see to it. He's never getting out again. He got out once, less than a day ago. The well, order of Ju <laughs> Sorry. Now I'm here. You <clears throat> think I'm going to let him out? <laughs> <sighs> 
Make a persuasion check. Add advantage because you did roar first. Okay. Fourteen and sixteen. Plus? And plus... Oh, minus one. Minus one, so fifteen. Yeah. The Order of Jukai was founded to protect this realm and the spirit realm from shattering. The stress of these new technological developments are ripping apart the spirit realm. He cannot be allowed to leave. You say that he won't. Make sure that it happens. The order will be checking. So we so we good? <laughs> Shigeki will uh will stand up straight and take a less aggressive stance. The fangs of Shigeki that were pulling daggers and getting ready to join the fray stand down. And Shigeki does like one of these. <laughs> he does four of those. That's right. All of the hands do this at each of the four <laughs> of you. <clears throat> and uh, Shigeki looks at Hank and says, sorry for the mess. <laughs> and will slither and slink back into the darkness if you allow it. I say too timidly, can I get a selfie before you go? But he doesn't hear me. Oh. Big I mean, fan maybe, of this card, man. Go ahead and make a, make a persuasion check. Make a persuasion check. It's oh, you are a big fan. You were talking about this when we were at the event. I was. I just rolled a one. Oh, no. <laughs> this is like the eighth one you've rolled. It's it insane. There's something wrong with your dice. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> uh, this is so cringe. I should, oh. Yeah. If you want to know, you know what? I'm not even going to make you roll. If you want an autograph, you get an autograph from Shigeki. Thanks. But, he, but he's probably not happy about it, right? You know? I mean, you guys just. Because I rolled so low, I'm like the super awkward type that's right. just like, a, dude, I was busy, not near the bathroom, please. Like, why yeah. have you no sense? Yeah, right. okay. I've but got I've got a specific got table it. that you can do this at at the con. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, we're going to put that online and I'm going to basically say we're best friends now. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Shigeki goes back uh, to his cadre and, fa and they fade away into the darkness of the night of Kamigawa. And you are left here in the rubble of Hank's shop. Uh, and you still have a decision to make as it pertains to what you want to do. So you have some time. We have about 10 minutes in the episode, guys. Let's try to figure out what we want to do going into our next episode. So Hank is probably freaking out. I'm still a bear for a little while, so I awkwardly try to pile up some of the bricks <laughs> and make him look like he has a wall. Mm. Like, just as a, like... Perfect. A gesture. <laughs> I love it. Great. I'm going to try to unbear your wall. <laughs> oh, thanks there. Thanks there, honey bear. I really appreciate it. Oh. Urgh, don't mention it. Pat, pat, pat. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So what are we going to do with Grease Fang before another idiot monster comes barreling through? It's either going to be his gang or another yeah. gang or some flying unicorn. We yeah. need to figure out what we're going to do with Grease Fang. I want... Mm to put them under the flag of Omnixilis and get them selling and working for us. What do you guys want to do? I know Bianca's against it, but there is four of us. And I also don't know what she agreed to, right? Because I don't speak Druid. Uh, right. Correct. Like, I just knew it I left, so I was like, okay. Um, I... Let's pretend a, a swirl of cherry blossoms go around. I'm back in my normal form. That's just my normal way of transforming. Everyone expects this now. Mm -hmm. And um, I saunter over to her and I'm like, Jen, 
You have no idea what I just went through to get them to leave. We have to turn him in. I made a promise to the snake. We made a promise to the wanderer too. Who cares? We're going to be on Capenna. It'll be fine. If we don't turn him in, we're going to have this whole snake gang after us and who knows who else. Can they plane jump? I don't think so. You're talking about burning every bridge that we have here and every bridge that we have with the plane jumpers because you think that Obnixilis has the best price. Yes. Mind if I so you- make a suggestion? <laughs> Could I? Okay. I butt in? Sorry, I, but it's like I'm kind of like in the middle of all this, so. What is Sorry it? about your wall. I think he's rat person. Oh, yeah, I'm Grease Fang now. Oh, okay. Hank is sweeping. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I could give a shit about whatever y'all are talking about. Um, <laughs> Grease Fang's like, so we, I mean, it seems like you're in a difficult situation. I know that more people are going to come after me, you know? Obviously, the Mudokai are going to come after me. I guess the Jukai are mad at me just because, like, I ride motorcycles. I don't get their whole deal. But, you know, if the spirit realm is going to be coming after me, I'm assuming that the samurai are going to be on their way. You know, uh, like the rest of the, the um, like a whole bunch of other factions are going to come after me as well. Kotose might be on the way, you know, if especially if uh, Tatsunari isn't able to track me down. Um, you're not going to want to have me around too long is all what I'm trying to say. So how about we do this? You could have it both ways. I think you could have it both ways. I think you could have it both ways. If you turned me in, you turn me in, right? You turn me in, but you give me a way to get out. You turn me in. You collect whatever it is deal you had with whoever it is that you had. But if I have a way to get out when I'm back in, and then maybe you don't come try to get me again, maybe we can have it both ways. You know what I mean? I was actually going to say, now that I know the druids are after him, like he probably wouldn't survive long and get to do what we want him to do anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm super concerned about that. <laughs> we need a way to copy him. Anybody got an Asika's chariot? We can make. <laughs> make Anybody got a phantasmal image? Make a clone. Right. We need a. We need a grease fang clone. We need to put a grease fang into jail, but then we need a grease fang out of jail, and then we still need a grease fang in jail. That's I mean, I, know I am so not. Cool. Just so you know, right now, I am not turning into him. I hate his look. <laughs> no, I've. I know some people. We can talk to the thousand faces if we want to try to get some disguise going. That's an option. Right. Or you could just give me a way to get out of prison when they put me back. I'm not sure what it is, but I say that we go for it. I if, can if, be willing to compromise as long as a grease fang goes away. Airball, this is your plane. What do you want to do with him? I think in terms of success, um, if the Wanderer finds out that we're lying, then things are going to go bad no matter what. So the question is, if she finds out, do we want her to have the actual Grease Fang or not? I think it makes sense to make a, a copy to give to her and hope that that fools her. And then if that goes south, then we can actually keep the, the deal with Grease Fang, and even though she's pissed. Okay. So we're looking at... It- a cloning device? Do we want to do? Do we go talk to Faelish? No, he he mentioned the thousand face shadow, the thousand face ninjas. Oh, yeah, we could do. We could. I could. We could go visit the thousand faces. Um, it's gonna be a bit of a trip. Tough we to got, get to. O- tough to get to Otora is what I'm trying to say. Have we shown no. you the mystery machine? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> vehicles we have excellent um what could we give them yeah. to get out of jail it would be easier would be easier and if he doesn't succeed 
No worries, we get our loot from the Wanderer. If he does succeed, maybe he'll help us out in the future. All right, so what, so what does he need to get out? That's the, maybe we should ask him that question. Yeah. What would I need to get out? Well, I would need to guarantee that I could get out. I would need, I'm assuming they would put me in the ghostly prison, which means that I would need the spirit guards to let me out. So I would need some sort of spirit technology to be able to get through the gates. Traditional lockpicks wouldn't necessarily work. Um, but I would need some sort of uh, spirit lockpick. I mean, we could figure something out along those lines. Um, and the hey. Thousand Faces would also have that information. So we'd, we aren't necessarily... We can think about it on the way. Hey, Hank, do you have any spirit lockpicks available in your stash? Spirit lockpick? I mean, uh, that's like a weird thing for me to have. Let me take a look real quick. I'm going to roll a luck check and see if he's got anything. <laughs> oh, no. Hank has a spirit lockpick. <laughs> um, uh, spirit mantle is a aura that gives protection from creatures. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Yeah, well, I got this here spirit mantle. Um, <laughs> so you can put this on, probably get on through. Um, and uh, Grease Fang will go, that looks beautiful. I would be very pleased to be able to take that, sneak it in to the prison, and sneak out. I think that this would be a plan that works. Now, all we need to do is get me to a ganjo without any more of these people who are hunting me. The safest place for me is prison. Yeah. Until I leave. Now that the druids are after him, I think he wants to go back to prison. He can wait it out there and then... Yeah. Yeah. If the druids are after me, I know for a fact the dragons are after me. There's no way they aren't at this point. Um, We already know that Tatsunari is after me. The other gangs are going to catch wind. We got to beat feet and get to Eganjo. ASAP. Do the mystery machine. Do the mystery machine. All right. So, I you guys got snacks or what? I'm removing 150 gold cuz that's what I have to give to um to Hank. Hank. Perfect. Much obliged. This thing was just collecting dust in my uh drawer here anyway. Well, Appreciate I, it. I thought it also might help with the wall. Oh, sure, the wall. Well, I was I mean, it's good to do some redesign. <laughs> Um, maybe I'll expand a little bit. Thanks, Hank. Sorry for the, the trouble. We didn't... Hey, no worries. Come on back anytime, preferably less violent-like next time, though. <laughs> He's taking this very well. To the mystery machine. So you guys can hop into the mystery machine. All around Kamigawa, there are forces of various kinds that are getting to the news that... Grease Fang was broken out of jail. Um, samurai are getting ready to ride their moths into battle. Um, Kitsune are getting into dragonfly suits. Various gangs and uh, um, uh, technologically um, advanced peoples are also getting geared up to try to find wherever Grease Fang is. The entire city is waking up to the knowledge that one of the most wanted people in all of the plane is on the move, and they've only got a brief amount of time before they're going to be handed over to the Emperor. After they're handed over to the Emperor, there's nothing that any of these other groups can do. So it's a race between all these groups and you. And that's where we'll end the episode. Yeah. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> good game, everybody. Yay, good games. I was not good expecting games. a giant bear to rip the back of the building off. Mm hmm. Yeah, I uh, I figured you guys are level two, so I wanted a two, two for two. And I was like, how do I make this fun? <laughs> <laughs> and a druid in druid shape or in wild shape is very fun for me. I am That's disappointed too that you didn't say he was smarter than the average bear. 
I did say that. I did. Not in, not in so many words. I, I did. Well, that's true. I did. I did say that this is not your average bear. It was close. Uh, yeah, yep. Yep. I, 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 I picked it up. I, I knew what was going but on. But yes, there. I, he was not smart. He wasn't necessarily, I didn't necessarily say that he was smarter than the average bear. Um, I, would, I will I, say at this point, I can only apologize. It's great having CGB's knowledge of the cards. Like, Aww, like I recognized the first snake. I didn't, re you know, I didn't really tie it to Shigeki at first because I actually didn't even know that card was a snake. But I recognized the little Death Toucher because it's a draft card. Mm -hmm. But you know, right. CGB having the Shroud card and a bunch of other stuff, getting to tie those in is really, really fun. Great. Yeah, right. I'm glad that everybody had a good time. I'm excited to uh, see where this story unfolds. You have kind of a new ally in. Grease Fang? Actually, you know what? Let's add Grease Fang to the allies list we, yeah. in Ooh. the hero's journey. Woo, yeah. I'll have to make my entry, too. Um, if you guys enjoyed the episode, make sure you guys hit up uh, Cool Stuff, the sponsor. Make sure you guys use the DGEN codes. That way we can, uh, you know, get renewed for a season two so we can get on to, uh, you know, Capenna and see what's going on on that plane. Um, before we hang up, Thank you all so much for uh, playing, and and I know that being new players, there's a lot of information and there's a lot of things that are new. Anytime you want to have a chat with me about your characters or about stats or about anything like that, um, we can either chat in the, in Discord uh, over text, or we can set up a meeting um, if you want to chat with with voice and stuff. Um, and also please put in, uh, any other, uh, so I have, I have the mind link mech written down. Um, if there's anything else that I need to write down, oh, the, um, self-destruct button. I need to do that as well. Um, okay. if there's anything else that you want me to craft or make an item card for, please let me know. Sounds okay. great. Great. Great playing with everybody. And I'll see you in two weeks. All right. See Bye, ya. guys. See you guys. Bye.